Hi, my name is Steve James, and I'm the teacher and author of the class and book on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 459, How to Stay Spiritually Connected. Hey, take your Bibles and go to the Gospel of John, chapter 15, and this morning I'm going to teach on staying connected, the importance of staying connected, and how to stay connected, okay? And in chapter 15, and you know, this is in the time period between the Last Supper and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, as he's walking, and as he's on his way to Gethsemane through the Mount of Olives, this is when this record is being talked to as he's walking with his disciples. So this must be important stuff. And Jesus starts off by saying, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. And the husbandman is like a cultivator or a farmer, Right. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. And this purging is, well, like getting rid of bad limbs or bad buds or anything. And it also is lifting it up, keeping it off the ground because the ground would tend to rot it. So keep it really good. And see, everyone who has ever worked on a vineyard knows how to do this, knows what this verse is about. It keeps everything growing well. Verse 3 says, And ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Jesus Christ gave them the word, and that helps keep them clean. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Jesus Christ is telling them, you guys need to abide in me. This is getting very close to when he's getting arrested. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He did, that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Not a little fruit, not a, one apple. For without me, you can do a little. No, nothing. We need to be stay connected to Jesus Christ. We need to if we want to grow fruit and have fruit in our lives. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and they cast them into the fire and they are burnt. They're not, not worth much. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, the words that Jesus Christ spoke, which you could say are the words from God because he always did the will of the Father. If ye abide in me and in my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Pretty, you want to get answers to prayer? Abide with Jesus Christ and the words that he spoke, right? It shall, you shall ask and it will and ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. See, God wants us to have much fruit. And the, the reason is because if you do, people can glorify God. They can say, look what happens to these group of people. They believe in God, and they have fruit in their lives. They're blessed. They're happy. The word's going to say they have joy. Verse 9 says, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. 
Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Jesus Christ abided in God's love. And now, if we listen to the words of Jesus Christ, we can abide in love. And so it's pretty neat. These things have I spoken unto you that your joy might remain with you and that your joy might be full. You want to have joyful lives? Stay connected. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Jesus Christ showed us the standard and we can love just like Jesus Christ loved. Because we have Holy Spirit also. You'll see this. Verse 13 says, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command. Henceforth I call, call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Not that he might, he would give it to you. We stay connected to our Lord and Savior, and we start to get the good power that's there. These things have I commanded you, that ye love one another. He's always asking us to love one another. I think it's probably a good thing to do. Go down to verse 26, and it says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. We're going to get this Comforter. He's telling his disciples as they're on this walk, right, that I'm going to give you a Comforter. I'm going to give it to you. It's going to be the spirit of the truth that it proceeds from my Father. But who's given it? Jesus Christ is going to give it. Look at verse 27. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. You've been with me from the beginning. I've been giving you the words of God. You have learned these. And you're getting ready to start to live this way because you're going to get born again. That's what he's telling them. Let's go to chapter 16, and we'll go to verse 7. It says, I don't even have to turn a page of my Bible. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Who's going to send the Spirit unto us? Who's going to send the comfort to us? Jesus Christ. He sends it to us. He also uh, gave the gift ministries. It says, Jesus Christ gives the gift ministries the ways of service. In our weekend in the Word, we learn that we receive Holy Spirit, and we have manifestations, and we have ways of service. And Jesus Christ gives both of those to us. Keep your finger here and go to Acts chapter 2. We're going to come right back here, that's why. Acts chapter 2. In verse 32, and it says, This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof 
We are all witnesses. See, this Jesus, who Peter is preaching, he says here, God raised up, and we're witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, Jesus is now at the right hand of God, exalted. He's not just sitting there, he's also exalted, right? And having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has shed forth this. What did he shed forth? Which ye now see and hear. Well, they saw and heard them speak in tongues. Jesus shed that forth. When anyone speaks in tongues, Jesus is shedding that forth. Jesus is giving that to you. And all we have to do is believe Romans 10, 9, and 10. Go back to John 16, and we're going to continue reading in verse 8. And when he is come, this he is talking about the comforter, which is Holy Spirit, and you could you could put the word it there. Today, I'm going to put the word spirit there. Okay? And when the Spirit is come, the Spirit will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go unto my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. And yet, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. He's got many things he needs to tell us, but he can't tell them then. Now, how be it when the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth is come, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall the Holy Spirit speak. And the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. See, the importance of staying connected through the Spirit is pretty good. We want to know all the truth. We want to see what's going to happen in the future. We need to see know what's going on. Verse 14, the Holy Spirit shall glorify me. God, see, God always gets the glory. And when you're looking at your life and things you're doing, you got to ask yourself, is God getting the glory? Yeah. Is God getting glory? For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. You're going to see it if you're connected. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. You're going to see it. You're going to show it unto you. You're going to know. How are you going to know? You're going to know by way of the word. God has given us his word so that we would know. You're going to know it by the spirit. You're going to know it by you asking in Jesus' name. Because we have the ability to ask in Jesus Christ's name. Let's go to verse 23 of 16. In that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will do it. Verse 24. Hither to... Have ye asked nothing in my name? Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in a proverb, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in proverbs, but shall show you 
uh, show you plainly the Father. You're going to continue to learn. It's going to be great. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So the Spirit is what we receive, and Jesus called it the Comforter. It's Holy Spirit. It is part of what God is. God is Spirit, and he gives us what he is. It's a way for us to communicate with God and God to us. And in chapter 14, and 14.1 uh, 14, says, Follow after charity, the love of God. We're always to follow after charity and desire spiritual matters or things. But rather that ye prophesy. For he that speaketh in a tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth, how be it in the spirit he speaks mysteries to a conversation. We speak in tongues. We speak in tongues. Now, in the church, we'd rather have prophecy. Why? Yeah, the context of this whole section is that the church receives edifying. If I was to stand up here or sit here and just speak in tongues, would anyone learn anything? It wouldn't profit you any, but boy, would I be getting profitable. So we get that bit of knowledge there. Look at verse 5. I would that ye all spake with tongues. Well, he would that they all spake with tongues, but rather ye prophesy. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with the tongue, except he interpret. Why? That the church may receive edifying. And when you see the remote context of this section, then you know, it's talking about how to edify the church is the subject. But he starts this off by saying, I would that I, you all speak with tongues. That's what it says. But rather, it's your prophesy that the church receives edifying. Look at verse 18. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. He was saying, I speak in tongues more than you all. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to start in verse 7, but I'd like to say a few words. We're going to see the changed Paul. He changed. He used to persecute the church. He would gather men and women and bring them to prison that they might kill them. You would say that Paul was a rough character. He desired letters for that purpose, just to go out and attack the Christians. Men and women. Kind of a rough character. But as you read the records about Paul, he became very loving. He taught a lot about loving. He said, why don't you be more loving in many teachings? He, Paul changed. He changed. He got, what was the thing that changed him? Well, it started out with him getting born again. Getting born again and starting to make that connection with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ via the Spirit. He spoke in tongues more than you all. And he was doing great things for God, which you can read in the book of Acts and the church epistles. And here we're here at 12 and verse 7, it says, And least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation. Well, he got an abundance of revelation. I think he was well connected. And he says that he spoke in tongues more than you all. Not a coincidence. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, that old bird, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice. He was praying to Jesus, praying 
in his name that it might depart from me in prayer. And he knew how to pray. He knew to pray to God in Jesus' name. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And what that means is when in low points in his life, when he needed some help, he would go to God in the name of Jesus Christ that we've learned and pray. And he says he prayed three times. The revelation that he got was, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. When you have to write, rely on God, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities or my weaknesses that the power of Christ may rest upon me. He says, I am going to believe that God's going to take care of this situation. And he's going to list a bunch of situations. See if any of these ever happen to you. Therefore, I take pleasure in my weaknesses, and here comes the list, in reproaches. You ever been reproached? Don't tell me. In necessities, the things you needed. In persecution. Ever been persecuted? In distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong when you rely on God to get you through it. And that's what he learned to do. He kept his connection well lubricated. So Paul changed from being a hard man to be a very loving man and getting an abundance of revelation and knowing that God was his efficiency, that God would get him out of trouble. Go to Galatians, just a couple of pages away, chapter 5, and we're going to start in verse 22. And it says, but the fruit of the Spirit, so it's talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit is a byproduct of operating the Spirit. You, you operate the Spirit, which is nine manifestations, ways of service, right? You're operating the Spirit. It's fruit from operating it. So if you speak in tongues more than you all, you're really operating the Spirit a lot. If you're doing your best to edify one another, you are operating the Spirit much. And then it goes on to say, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith or believing, meekness, temperance, Against such, there is no law. To receive this fruit, there's two things that needs to happen. One is you have to be manifesting. The other is the renewed mind. It's the renewed mind because you have to acknowledge that these are now your characteristics. Just like in Romans 5.5, 5, it says, the love of God is poured upon us through the Holy Spirit that is given to us. Well, that's true, but then you have to act that way. You have to act that way. You have to put it on in your mind and act that way, loving. Here, love is the first fruit mentioned. We have to put on the word we have to manifest it, and put it on, and act that way. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, believing, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. It's not the law. It's not the, the renewed mind law. It's the renewed mind recognizing who you are. Because we have Holy Spirit, this is our characteristics. So we just change our way of doing things. Just like Paul changed from a hard man to a very loving man with all these attributes. 
verse 24 says, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. See, now that we're Christ, we have Holy Spirit, we crucify, we, it's killed, it's dead. It's no longer part of our lives, right? The flesh with its affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. The thing we want to do is stay connected. And I shared that earlier. We stay connected by manifest in Holy Spirit. Manifest in Holy Spirit. One of the easiest ones I know is speaking in tongues. Because you can do that in your private prayer life whenever you want. And we can do the others too. And that's how you get the fruit of the Spirit by operating the fruit of the Spirit. We do this by the Word, knowing the Word and renewing our mind to what the Word says we have, by the Spirit, which can give us information at times to help us through different things, and by us asking in Jesus' name. That's how we stay connected. And then we can tap in to the fruit of the Spirit by operating in the Spirit and renewing our minds to the fact, the truth of what we have. We are now loving people. We're really good at it. We could go up to someone and say, would you like to meet the greatest lover of all time? <laughs> and if they said yes, you could say, well, let me introduce you to Jesus Christ. Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, that's uh, that. Hi, I'm Steve James. I'm announcing an online class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. It will be offered in two ways. One is you could zoom in on Saturday mornings from 10 a.m. to noon, Eastern Time Zone in the United States, to hear previously recorded and augmented new sessions. The second way is to go to Steve's website, click on the recorded sessions links to hear the sessions, to see the syllabus, scriptures, and notes. Participants can use both ways to go through the class. If they miss something, they can review it on their own. The notes for each episode are in the show notes of each session. You can schedule your own time to go through the class. You can attend Steve's online Zoom class, ask questions, and discuss the keys and principles that will help you to understand how to read the Bible. For more information on this exciting class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power, go to the announcement and events page of stevejanes.com.